Yes, people, welcome back to Tea with Timsy. This is episode three, and I'm blessed to say I'm joined by my brother, Arsenal's right back. It is Hector Bellerin. Hecky boy, what are you saying? Hi, brother. You good? Pardon me. All good, G. You? I'm great, man. Thank you so much for coming on, man. No, my pleasure, man. I appreciate it. I, I reached out to Hector. I was like, oh, I'm starting this show. I've got this idea. I'd love for you to come on. He's like, yeah, bro, just let me know. I didn't yeah. actually think you'd do it, but you did. Yeah, man. Had to drive for two hours in like, rainy London, but yeah. apart from that, all good, gee. I'm excited <laughs> yeah. to be here. <laughs> You've had to work hard to get here. Um, nah, it's all good. And also, as you can tell, the show is called Tea with Timsy. Tea with Timsy Soul. Now, we are actually... Okay, cheers, by the way. Cheers. So, this is actually tea, you know. So, on the other episodes with, with, my, with my boys, they were like, yeah, you should have the tea there. Chunks, Ramadan, so he wasn't yeah. drinking. But this is actually tea. This is chocolate tea, because Heck was like, Bro, you need to get on this chocolate tea with no, a bit of chocolate tea. vanilla. Chocolate yogi tea. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very good. So thank you for this. You're welcome, man. I feel like this is full circle as well because you showed me this like nice little vegan tea. Mm. I swear, I was the one who put you on the vegan thing. What? I swear, do you not remember? <laughs> Were you, was it you? I, 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 so during that time, I spoke to like, a lot of people okay. that were on that wave. And uh, you, de you were definitely one of them. But I, that I just don't remember if... I met you, or we spoke about it after I was already on it, or you actually talked to me about it. So I think because I think I think I was already on it, and you were like, "Yeah, I've been vegan for like two years," and I was like, what? "Okay, maybe, maybe." Because it that's was the way it was. The first shoot we ever met and filmed at was Call of Duty back in the day, and this was like 2016, yeah, probably. Yeah. But it was the one where we properly chatted for the first time was at the Arsenal training ground, and I remember I had, we had that photo of me showing you my beard. I was like, yeah, I've got a beard going, whatever. And obviously you laughed in my face because you also didn't have a beard. Man, we've been around for long, isn't it? I know, I know, wow. a long time. Time was quick. But that was, that was the shoot where I thought, yeah. okay, yeah, I'll get him on his vegan thing because I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was a year in, I was like, okay, let's, let's get And you were receptive. Yeah, but I feel yeah, like yeah. you're like that anyway. You're quite open yeah, to yeah, yeah. new things. Yeah, so. but I feel like we had, once I was already vegan, we had like a little chat, you and me, and then you told me that you had already been vegan for like two years or like one year or something. Mm. Oh, that's crazy because like, now it's kind of easy to be vegan, right? So you easy. have a lot of information. You go out in London, you find like a vegan yeah. menu everywhere. But back in the day, it was tough, bro. We were in the trenches, in the trenches, <laughs> the vegan Real trenches. trenches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, there was nothing out there, man. So no fake chicken, no fake burgers. There's nothing. <laughs> it's just carrots, <laughs> yeah. celery, and that's it. Our own little vegetable patch in our garden. Um, that's all it was. So it's been a good few years. Um, firstly, I, how have you been? You good? Yeah, I've been good, man. Yeah? I've been good, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always, it's always a pleasure to link up with you, bro. It's yeah, like, it's always good, man. It's always yeah. good. You just, I feel like we're, we're quite similar. Obviously, we look similar. Yeah. And people always tell me, oh, you look like Hector, but better looking. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, they say the same to me, yeah. <laughs> you look like Timmy, yeah, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just a bit worse, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot has happened since we first met. Hmm. And obviously, that was sort of early-ish in your Arsenal career. No, not even Corona then, innit? No, not even. Last 18 months has been wild, yeah, man. Wild. But let's not talk about that yet. Keep, keep going, sorry. Yeah, we could, we could forget. No, that's all right. I mean, looking back now at your early stages of like Arsenal and when you kind of first came onto the scene, do you consider yourself like the same person as you were then? Because you've done so much. Yeah. No, I don't consider myself the same person. No. Obviously, in essence, yeah. Like, yeah. I think we all keep like so many things of ourselves. And, yeah. But I feel like I've changed a lot. And looking back, at that guy, you know, playing Call of Duty. Yeah. I remember with that Call of Duty polo and going to their events and stuff like that. I'm, I'm so different in like the goals that I had then or like the perception of myself, mm. of what I could achieve on and off the football pitch. It's completely different, man. I was yeah. like, I feel like so uneducated in many ways um, and so much less open-minded than I am today. Yeah. And, you know, due to, London, uh, Arsenal, the people that I've met in this past like six, seven years, my mentality as a, I don't know, as a human being has like completely yeah. shifted. So looking back, I'm like, well, who was that guy? You know, how did yeah. I get to where I am today? But yeah. very different mentality, very different goals. But I mean, at the end of the day, I'm still the same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah for, for sure. Real. As you just explained, like it was quite a gradual, I guess, change to who you are now. Because mm -hmm. I was going to ask before, like, have you always been open-minded and because you're a very open liberal worldly person you know mm. what I mean do you know at what time at what point in your life and in your career 
that did sort of happen where you realised oh, I actually do have interest outside of football. Mm. Yeah, I remember. And, and the thing is that I was always a bit different as a kid in terms of like, you know, me and my best friend used to like uh, hip hop a lot, like American hip hop. Yeah. And in Spain, no one used to listen to that music. Like in Spain, you listen to Spanish music or reggaeton and stuff like this. So yeah. we were always like set a bit apart, you know? Yeah. And that meant the way you dress, the music that you listen to and uh, I don't know how you used to, I don't know, interact with people, everything, right? And that was a bit different in that sense. But then obviously coming to play to Arsenal in the UK away from home and, you know, you just want to blend in, you just want to like be a part of like the club and mm. everything. So I was like, I need to learn English really quick and I just trying to like make friends with my teammates and, you know, maybe like, you know, you try and dress the way they dress or like just try to feel like a part of it, more of it. So it makes it easier. Um, so I did that and then um, slowly, as I became more comfortable uh, and more at home here in London, and you know, I was someone that I would say that Arsenal gave me an oyster and unlimited oyster when I arrived. Oh, really? So I could get bus, I could get <laughs> tube, train, everything yeah. free, right? So every Sunday, I used to speak to, I used to live in digs with a, with a British family, and um, I used to ask the, the mum of the family, like, where can I go? She was like, oh, you can go to Covent Garden to get it. Go to Camden, go to, like, anyway, so many places. So I just get on the, on the tube, I look up the lines, and then sometimes I used to get lost. Like, yeah, it's yeah. difficult, you know, because I didn't understand anything. But um, I used to go out by myself and just, like, discover, like, try to explore a little bit and nice. stuff. So um, me seeing, especially, like, places like Camden back in the day, like, it was so crazy for me. Obviously, like, there's so many tourists and stuff, and I guess it's not how it used to be, but yeah. just, like, the different lifestyles that you see that people live and the different styles they have and mm. how they're expressing themselves. Like, in, in Spain, I never really saw that. Yeah. You know, I, I lived in a small town, it's like 20,000 people, so, like, you would basically see the same people yeah. every day. It's you like, know everyone. Yeah, it's like suburban America, I don't know. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. To, uh, to compare a little bit, but, yeah, I feel like London showed me so many things and sides that I had never seen before. And it kind of helped me bloom and understand and be more open-minded to like accept more as people for, like for who they are and you know they can be so different to you but you know they're, they're still here for the same reason etc. Yeah. So uh, then I got more interested in in clothes and like the way that I dressed and stuff and you know I, I met a few people, a few designers in London and stuff and they were like oh you should like come to my show and you should do this and you should do that and yeah you know I started like getting into the circle and I was like oh maybe I can do something here you know yeah. because obviously when I first arrived into the first team the last thing I wanted to do was like act different or I just wanted to be you know one more of the team and yeah. be accepted play and then football. go yeah play football that's team, it yeah. but then when I cemented my place I was like there was like something inside of me that I just wanted to come out, you know, that I was like, I, I need to though. do some more. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was always, uh, I always had a good team around me that also they were pushing me to, to be who I wanted to be. And Hex, if you want to do this, just try it. You know? yeah. like, you're not going to lose anything for that's doing great. that. So yeah, and that's how the ball started rolling. And, you know, from fashion, I got different interests and I met different people and that kind of got me to where I am today. Which... So it's like that, it opened the floodgates, that yeah. initial interest and, yeah. and almost getting over that mental barrier of like, I can actually do stuff outside of football. Yeah. A lot of people ask me this, like, what, what is Hector like? It's like, oh, hey, like, what's he like? He seems really cool. I was like, yeah, he, I mean, he's cool. But I say like, I say, it's actually weird how normal you are mm. as a person. Yeah. And in that way, you're, you're not a, I guess, normal footballer because you don't, you don't just play football. Mm. You're not afraid to like speak up about it. It's quite, one, it's quite rare, but it's also quite brave just because you have such a big platform and you're so, you're such a public figure. Have you always felt this like sense of responsibility since you've had your platform to use it for, for, for good or for stuff that you're interested in? Yeah, first of all, I appreciate all the words that you're saying. Oh, it's my boy, <laughs> it's my really boy, nice. it's my boy. Um, but, I've not, I've not always felt the responsibility. There was a time that I didn't even know that I had it mm. and that I could use it mm. and that my, uh, the way that I expressed myself could influence people in a way. I, I didn't even think that that was a, a possibility back then. That is something that I could see with time. And as my mind was getting more, was opening and was, um, you know, understanding more the world and my surroundings and how could I influence them then I felt more powerful to speak and I felt more responsible to speak in a positive way and engage with people and start conversations. And uh, it's something that 
yeah, and the people around me challenge me, you know. Um, I see my best friend that, um, you know, he's the guy that helps me with everything that I do off the pitch. He, he, he was someone that was pushing me, you know. He was like, Hector, if you believe in this, why don't we, you know, speak to this person? Why don't we say this? Like, because he knows me. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. probably he doesn't, he doesn't know if I want to talk about it publicly, but he, he would challenge me to do it, you know. Nice. And I feel like I've been very, very lucky uh, and very grateful with, like, the people that I've met along the way that I feel that they've fully shaped me in who the person I am For and sure. how they've like um, accepted the risks that I wanted to take and you know I am where I am and they are where they are also because you know it's kind of like you you help each other you know like yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you were saying with like Poet and Vuj which are you know that I watched the, the episode it's like you see like how Poet also tries to help people around him and sure. you know that helps him and you help each other and now it comes full circle so it's for like sure. that like for everyone and I think you have to be lucky to be able to meet these people I think you have to also put yourself in a situation when you can meet uh, these people and form these friendships but um, definitely uh, right now I do feel an urge to um, you know speak my voice and understand other people's voices and yeah. engage with them and I feel things like Marcus Rashford's doing, you know, which is great, which is, amazing, um, yeah. yeah, you can, you can, you have a power to literally to unite a country, you yeah. know, when you do things well. So, sure. um, it's very difficult to grasp and to understand at the beginning, but yeah. then once you realize you have that power, you feel like that you really need to use it for good. Yeah, for sure. Cause it is a risk. Like as you were saying, it is a risk because you know, the, the, there are so many issues and even I've, I mean, as a small figure, right. I, I also feel this pressure of like, I feel like I should speak about this, but then I'm thinking like, it's just not worth it because like I'm putting mm. at risk, like not money, but like my career, my reputation. And even though I believe this is right, I don't know if I'm right. Mm. And I'm not well educated on this matter compared to this matter, you know? So it's, I always find it, I almost think about it too much because I'm like, what should I do? Like, is it my duty to do it or is it, I don't know. No, I, and, and I understand. And for me it's also, I don't speak about everything. Mm. you know, in the world. I think you have to pick your battles and I think you have to, there's only as much information as you can have and as much research that you can do. Every time that I speak about a subject, I try to be as educated as I can. And also when I talk about something, I'm not trying to tell you, yo, you should think like this. Mm. No, I'm just giving you my point of view and yeah. what I feel. And I'm always open to start a conversation because I think a lot of the issues that go around in our world and a lot of the conversations that we're hearing, they're not black and white. They're yeah. not like you're right wrong. and you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not like this. So it's all about understanding like, why does this person think like that? Why, why, why does this person vote for Trump? You know, they'll have their reasons. Mm. And it's not right or wrong. It's just like, this person comes from a background or whatever, or like their Exposed life experiences. Yeah. But we, when you don't vote for Trump, you don't even want to listen to this person. You just want to talk to people that don't vote for him. Yeah, so you never yeah, see yeah. the other side. Yeah. And that's why the world is also like so polarized, you know? Yeah. So I feel, it's all about starting these conversations in which like you can see that even if you don't agree with certain people, maybe they'll make you see something that you didn't know. Yeah. Maybe they won't change your opinion, but at least you know why they're doing it. Yeah, and they, yeah. they're not just doing it for the sake of it. You yeah, know? So yeah, yeah. I think that's the important thing about speaking your voice, not so much the fact that I don't, I don't want to uh, put my opinion as a fact and mm. I don't want people to think the way I think, but I want to challenge them and look, this is the way I think like, if you have something to say, there's a debate and yeah, let's talk yeah, yeah. and let's, you know. Hector for Prime Minister, though. <laughs> 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 but lead, leading on from that, there, were, there was what, something I did want to ask you where, mm. when it comes to footballers, do you think footballers should be role models? Obviously, the public put footballers as role models, right? And mm. that's why they're, they're, they're struck down so much because everyone thinks well, they should all live an amazing life and lead by example. Mm. Do you think footballers should be put pinned up as role models? If I'm honest, I think everyone in their own right and their own way are a role model. Okay. We are just role models to like different amounts of people, let's say. You mm -hmm. probably are a role model to someone in your family that's younger than you and they look up to you and they watch YouTube all day and like all this stuff. So you're a role model to them. So I feel like as a role model, you do have responsibilities, you know? Yeah. And definitely when a person becomes a celebrity or is an elite athlete and they have a following and they have, you instantly become a role model for someone. Well, so, whether you like it or not, basically. Whether you yeah. like it or not, yeah. yeah. And obviously, maybe for the parents of, the, of that kid that is looking up to that person, maybe it's not the right role model, you yeah. know, because uh, for many different reasons. But you automatically, in the day that we live today, I feel also like being a celebrity or being an elite athlete, it's like, it's what everyone wants to do. 
everyone wants to go viral, everyone wants to go famous. Like there's really not many people that don't. Yeah. So people that are in those positions, they automatically like become role models. Mm. And I think that's why I feel some sort of like responsibility as well to like show up for the football and say like, we've had such a bad stereotype and such a bad name for many yeah. years. And honestly, that's just what you see on the news and that's what people want to talk about. Well, that's not the way we are. Yeah. You know, and to for me, I feel comfortable enough to share who I am and to share my feelings and my vulnerabilities and, you know, and just show me as a person to the public eye and for yeah. people to understand that at the end of the day, we're normal people. As you were saying, like, I'm a normal guy. Yeah. And I go, you know, in, in, in my little town for a coffee and, like, I talk to the people there and I try to live my life as more normal as I can. Yeah. There's times that you can't do it for certain reasons, but yeah. as much as I... I can, I try. Yeah. And uh, so many of us are like that. It's just like, also the things, the, the negative things that come with football, and I'm not talking about scrutiny, but like safety, for example, you know, and then there's players that probably cannot walk around the street oh, right. by yeah, themselves, course, you know? Yeah. So, but as much as we try, we, we can, and you know, it's, it's uh, difficult to be scrutinized 24 seven, but that also gives you the opportunity to, to be positive and to be influential yeah. to like a lot of people around you and people that are looking at you. Yeah, nice. I mean, he is a, he is a normal person because he's got a three-legged cat. Yeah. We were going to film this at, well, are we allowed to say? Yeah, we were going to film this at his house. Yeah. And um, Heck was just, was just on the phone. But one team to come on, man. Bro, he's, he's on the phone and then <laughs> I just hear this meow. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, bro, you Shout know, out like, Hanky. Hanky, is that what? Hanky, yeah. Okay, nice. I was like, ooh, yeah, is that a cat? He's yeah. like, yeah, bro, it's my three-legged cat. Come on. Man. Yeah, man, I mean, Rescue. you know, quarantine got lonely for a while. <laughs> and uh, I had a friend that, um, you know, he, he knew someone that was like rescuing cats. And yeah. he was rescuing cats, I think, in like Dubai or somewhere like that, because there's loads of stray cats over there. But, okay. And yeah, man, he showed me all, like some of them that they had there. And um, Hanky was missing a leg, and I was like, "This is my guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is my guy." So, yeah, man. That's amazing. He's he came in June, so yeah, we've been best friends for almost a year. That's great, bro. Yeah, that was like prime lockdown as well. Prime man. lockdown, yeah. Yeah, last eighteen months has been obviously crazy mm. just for everyone. Um, how have you handled it? Because we've we caught up middle of the summer, and that was for Arsenal when we did that chat. Mm -hmm when you just shaved your head and I was like, whoa, my man's having some trouble. Like, he's, he's just like struggling. Britney, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, <laughs> troubling times. Britney. But, um, um, yeah, it was, it, how, how, how have you found it? Because it has been, I mean, life-changing for, for everyone and especially you with the injury as well that you, you had before. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was uh, very hard. It was very good in many ways. It was such a, like, I learned so much through all this process. Uh, I mean, it's been so tough for so many people. And, you know, I'm someone that I'm like, I feel like I have a lot of empathy and like I carry the weight of the world a lot, you know, and I really feel bad for what was going on. But also, I spent a lot of it alone as well, which like at times it was really difficult and really tough. challenged me. And yeah. my mental health was like, you know, uh, I was struggling at times. Um, but also it gave me the time to like just pause for a long time, which I hadn't done in, in a really, really long time, probably since I'm a professional or since I came yeah. to Arsenal and, you know, retake old interests or just actually sit down and be bored and, you know, a chance to ditch your phone because you don't have to be anywhere or yeah, you don't have to yeah. check your times or like, you know, things like that. So it was, uh, very good, got really bad. Went a bit worse, <laughs> and then it slowly got better and better. Good. And good. Uh, the glad. good thing is, like, it's taught me a lot uh, about and, yourself, and I feel like in a way better place than it was before. Amazing. In many areas of my life, and you know, as hard as it's been for me, it's been really positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, just, just because of that, because of the teachings. I, so. Yeah, exactly. And I think everyone who's gotten to this point as well, it's like it's been so hard for everyone. It's like everyone should be so proud of themselves for getting through this because there's no sure. one way to deal with a global pandemic which mm. has never happened before to this extent right in our lifetimes anyway mm. so it's like however you get through it man as yeah. long as we all get through that's all that matters you know what i mean yeah and, and and the world we live in and the way we live is even worse that a pandemic hits because oh. of like 
you know, we, we live in like tiny apartments and like we, I don't know, we always like on Instagram and all these things that don't help either, you know, like oh. I was very lucky that just before the pandemic, I had moved to the countryside. So I had my garden or I Amazing. could go for like a walk in the forest and that. But I, I had friends that they were in a one bedroom apartment that they didn't even have like a big window or like whatever. And like, they really, really had it tough. Yeah, so yeah, I feel yeah. so lucky in that sense. But at the same time, it's like, that's how we think that we're supposed to be living in. Mm. You know, those conditions that we already have with like, I don't know, I'm gonna say like 80% or 70% of people are not even happy. And then pandemic hits, it's yeah. like, obviously you're gonna struggle. Yeah. And of course we did. When, when we had lunch, were you in a good space then? I think I w that was like, I had already gone from my bad. Okay, okay. And then I was already on the come up. Okay. Yeah, my bad was like the first, the first quarantine. Because the, 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 the funny thing is like, before COVID hit, I was already, I, I wasn't in a good, in a good position mentally. Um, I don't know, I, I was just like struggling a little bit and stuff. Personal and, and professional. Just. Yeah, 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 a little bit. And um, yeah, it was, because um, even after I came back from my injury. After LA. Yeah, after LA. Yeah. Good LA. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was good fun. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, after I came back from my injury, um, I, I was still feeling that I wasn't there 100%. Yeah. And actually, quarantine gave me the time to like really work on my leg and stuff like that. And I feel like when I came back from from uh, when we restarted the league and stuff, I was in a so much better yeah. place. And you know, I've been able to play like three games in a week and stuff like that, which like before quarantine I wasn't able just, to yeah. because my body was just kind of like breaking down. So. You know, I was dealing with all that and then pandemic hit. So I wasn't already in like the best places yeah. for that. But as I say, very positive in terms of like what I've learned and how I feel right now, how comfortable I am with yeah. that was, was, was happening. Because we also get used to, which is yeah, sounds yeah, yeah. bad, but you know, that, that, but at the end it's good. And I think um, whoever hasn't taken anything from these 18 months, they really should look up themselves in the mirror yeah, and see yeah, because yeah. I feel like a lot of people that I've been speaking to, they're like, yeah, I've struggled, but you know, yeah. good things have come from this. But that's a, like a lot of people. Yeah, and I feel like often going through adversity makes you such a, I guess, a better person or, or mm -hmm. you, if you come out you the other grow. side, you're often, yeah, you grow, yeah. yeah. So like I've, I mean, I've literally experienced this over the last like few months mm -hmm. where I was like down, down. Because mm -hmm. I, I identify so much with my work mm -hmm. and I get a lot of my value and my worth through I'm working, I'm busy because I'm, mm. I'm needed and, and like this is what I do and it's what I love to do, you know what I mean? So then when I'm not doing that, I feel worthless and get in my head more, you know, it just yeah. like snowballs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I, yeah, I, st I feel that whole going through adversity to come out the other side and grow as a person is obviously a massive thing. And it reminds me of when, when we were in LA at pre-season and we had, we had some food and then we went on, we had, we had a good time. And, <laughs> and, and I remember you telling me, um, I don't know if you still agree with it because it's been a, a long journey mm -hmm. even since then, since you recovered, um, that you said getting your injury was like one of, one of the best things that you, you went through mm -hmm. as a person. Yeah, because when you talk to a footballer and you say like, oh, this, having an ACL is positive, you think like, oh, in the football pitch, how's that positive? Exactly. Like, how's yeah. that positive? But for me, as a person, it was. And I spent two months in Barcelona with my family, which I hadn't done since I was like 16 mm -hmm. or 15. Uh, I was able to like, you know, start taking pictures and like I was drawing, like I was drawing as a kid and, you know, I was like doing, making clothes with my mom in, in the house that we have in Spain and like things like that, that also adversities. I had never even had the surgery ever, you yeah. know, and uh, I had never gone through like a bad injury that I had to take me out of the game for eight or nine months. And mm. it was so hard to see my teammates play and, you know, my leg, I couldn't even move my leg and I was like, how the hell am I gonna get back on that pitch, you know, and so many things and, yeah resilience and patience and uh, understanding the limits of my body and how can I push it and how can I not and things like that. So for me, it was really positive in that way. And um, like, it's really interesting what you were saying about how your work defines you. And that is something that I feel really lucky because um, I feel for a lot of footballers that is the case. And you know, obviously that I have loads of interests outside of football. And actually those interests is what actually helped me come up during that time where, okay. where I was in a good place. And, you know, I've always had like loads of negative uh, comments and things like, oh, he doesn't focus on football, he doesn't do that. But for me, actually those things that weren't football, which was like my photography or like projects that I was working on the side that 
had nothing to do with football, like designing the kits for, for Volta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my H&M collection that was already happening during during quarantine, yeah. all these things. GMO, that, 424. 424, yeah, that, that, I think that happened before, but just like all the stuff that I was working on during quarantine that had nothing with, to do with football, they were actually pushing me and elevating me and making me feel better about myself and somehow just healing me to then be in a place where I could be. So, Amazing, yeah. You know, one of the psychologists uh, that he used to work at Arsenal, um, we spoke after quarantine and he was like, I, I knew that you would be one of the ones and you will have the resources to actually, you know, don't be so down or if you are to be For able sure. to come up because as a footballer, so many of them, they just have a pillar of football and family, right? And there's only two things and when one, it's not happening and some of them they probably had to be away from their family or their yeah. family was struggling etc they have nothing yeah you know i i was lucky enough to have other things and the, the way i've lived my life or the opportunities that i've had that put me in a position where yeah you know football is my main priority for sure and obviously as, as you say it's something that um you know it reflects in my mood in my day to day i have a bad training session i have a good training session i lose a game i win a game whatever but then at the end of the day when i get home there's so many other things that, you know, made me feel good, that improved me as a person that, yeah. you know, I can relax and do and still enjoy. And that really helped me to come up doing those yeah, times. Yeah, for sure. I guess, do, do, you, do you define yourself by being a footballer? I know you are, obviously mm -hmm. everyone knows you are a footballer, mm -hmm. right? You know, that question of, oh, what do you do? So, okay, I'm, I'm a presenter. Uh, I, I sort of think I don't really know what I am. I'm a presenter, YouTuber, kind of host. I don't, I don't really know, but I sort of know. You know you're a footballer, but do you define yourself as a footballer? Or at the end of your career, do you would you think back and be like, okay, I was this footballer? How do you want to be like remembered? I guess. I just to start with, I just find funny that we kind of describe ourselves by our job, which yeah. I think like we are so much more than our job, you know. And the fact that you just meet someone out by and you're like, what do you do? You know, it's like one of the first questions that you ask, and then I think there should be so many other questions. And I'm one of the persons that ask those questions, you know. How but, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For it's example, one, yeah. where are you from? Like, what are you doing? I don't know. But we, we, it's like such a, I think like in the world we live here in the West, it's like such a big part of who you are, or how, how people see you is the work you do. Yeah. And for me, it's obviously the main thing and it's how people see me. But I'm, I'm happy that in the last few years, I've met people that they don't know me just because of football. But wow. they know me because See. they find me because, oh, yeah, he's the vegan footballer, but yeah. they don't know me because they like football. They know me because they're vegans yeah, and yeah, then yeah. they found out this about me yeah. and things like this, you know? Yeah. Which that makes me really happy. And I, that also, because that also makes people like football or like follow Arsenal it's because, true. like, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I like the fact that, that I've been able to connect with people further away, away, away from football and I can connect with people that have other interest and we can still you know make a connection and have a conversation about other things whereas i think a lot of footballers have that inside of them that all of them have interest yeah of course even yeah. if it's just call of duty yeah <laughs> after yeah. that you no, know but, but there's course, so yeah. but there's so many they just like don't explore them in that way but for me describing a person or like having preconceptions of a person just because of the job that they do it doesn't sound right to me yeah so. yeah do i see myself as a footballer no, I just see myself as a human being, man, that likes to play football and is like Come lucky, on, lucky enough to get paid to do that, that. And it's the dream that I had since I was a kid. So, yeah. yeah, I love that. With football and outside of football, uh, as you said, you have so many interests and you've done so many things for someone like you're literally so young still. What's been your proudest achievement or proudest moment on the pitch, like with football and off it? For me, on the football pitch, it's probably been, I have to, one of them is my first FA Cup. That one, uh, because it was my first season, the dressing room accepted me and treated me amazing. Um, you know, at the beginning of that season, I thought I was gonna go on loan to play in Holland, I, I think it yeah. was, and that didn't happen. And then after the Emirates Cup, the boss wanted me to stay and I ended up playing 30 games and starting and all of this. So that was, that was an amazing experience. And the second one is for me wearing the Arsenal armband, you know, and uh, being wow. captain or vice captain of the of the team. And for me, since I was a young kid at Barcelona, I was the captain or one of the captains in the in the team. I was always like second or third as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I always felt like that part of me, you know, that wanted to be a leader or wanted to lead by example. I'm not I'm not someone that's gonna shout at you in your face or like grab you against the wall. Yeah, but I'm yeah. someone that 
for me, that's not leading. For me, leading is like helping and serving people. And, yeah. you know, when someone's not feeling good, uh, you know, help them feel better and yeah. asking questions and responding to questions and just creating the best environment for everyone to, mm -hmm. to work. And um, for me, the fact that, you know, my teammates or the coaches trusted me to be one of the captains and, you know, for the club that I love, which is Arsenal, that gave me everything since I was 16. And, you know, I've, even though I, I, I come from Barcelona, I've grown so attached to, to this football club. So for me, that was a, a really proud moment. Nice. So that was your proudest on the pitch. Off the pitch. Off the pitch, we can go, I mean, right. LV catwalk, <laughs> mad. And I remember we spoke about this and you were shaking in your boots. Um, yeah, no, no, I was... Yeah, yeah. Nervous. Shit myself. But that was sick though, because it was just like, you call up Virgil, was like, hey, come on, get me on the cat. Or did he phone yeah. you or you phoned him? He phoned my friend. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and then it happened. I was, I was, that was at that time that I was, um, I was injured and yeah. I had just started to walk and stuff like that. And I was in, in Greece doing my rehab. Just started to walk and just doing Yeah, and I was, I was in Greece doing my rehab and I was like, well, I hope I can't walk in off like throughout those pebbles as well. It wasn't even like this, you know, it was like pebbles, Bro, it, was it started cobbled, raining. Cobbled Parisian streets. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be difficult, but nah. I mean, I feel like, Nailed it. yeah, I had been walking for around like 25 years. <laughs> and you'll be right. It was pretty fine. fine yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, you've done so much. It's yeah, I mean, difficult. I'm going to sound a bit like cheesy, but... No, nah, bro. Just... I mean, all these things are obviously so cool, you know, and yeah. I enjoyed a lot of LV and 4 to 4 and all this stuff. But for me, how these things have happened and the people that have been, I have been able to to work with along the way doing these things, like you or like Guillermo, like for me, working with Guillermo was like, whoa, like this guy is like, I look up to him so it's much genius, off, off the pitch and the stuff that he does and how he lives his life. And, you know, every time I, I, I meet with him and, and he comes to London, you know, and, and we go to the pub or something and we just speak for four hours. I finish that conversation and I'm like, yo, I love this guy. Like, you know, it's, like, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, the knowledge that he has and, and how, he, how he sees the world, you know? His perspective so, in fashion is, yeah, and the world is yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. So amazing. for me, being able to meet these people and work with them, that's for me like my proudest achievement because now he's my friend, you know, like yeah. it all started like uh, a friend connected us. Oh yeah, let's do something one day. Da, da, da. And then we ended up doing like this amazing thing that, you know, just because of the fact that he's so good, he was able to also do it with Adidas and then Arsenal 44 and Adidas. This is like never seen before, you yeah. know, and yeah. this is all because of him. But the fact that I, I'm able to call these people my friends now, it's my proudest achievement. Oh, achievement. that's nice. Oh, wait, am I included in that? Yeah, yeah, for sure, bro. Lit, bro. Come not on, forced bro. at all. Come, Come on, on, not forced. On. I've made yeah, sure yeah. I was in that list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's sick, though. I mean, you need to get me on some stuff because I'm going down your route, right? Where, you, so I showed Hector how to be vegan and now he's just <laughs> run with it too far where now he's past me and now, I, obviously, I do a lot of sustainable stuff, so I don't wear leather. Mm -hmm. But y you now... You like upcycle. You re you yeah. don't really shop anymore, right? Yeah. You 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 reuse clothes. And yeah. Yeah. This is probably like four years old. Really? Yeah. All That's this great. stuff. This, I, I, this stuff I had for a long time ago, and I feel like when we were talking earlier that when you like kind of like close the door, open the door, there's so many others that open it. For me, going vegan at that time when I did it, it was almost just like health. You know, I wanted to feel better. That's so the same. Let's do it. And then. I started meeting more people that were vegan as well, but then they were more conscious about the environment. Then other people that were more conscious about animal welfare, about all these things, and you end up like making, you know, life changes and making more conscious choices and mm. more things seems to matter to you. And I think one of the things it does is like, you just become more compassionate about everything and like the world around you and stuff, yeah. which I think is something that I've, become more in the past few years that I'm really proud of, you know, to, to be on, on, on this journey. And for me, as someone that loves fashion and my, my family have been making clothes forever and, you know, me going to fashion shows and I'm like, I was like the biggest fashion consumer ever. And then one day I just went like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Like, I don't, I can't be a vegan and saying people that to be sustainable do this and then I'm spending, you know, so much money on clothes. Like, yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense. So yeah. it was really difficult for me because it, it was such a part of my identity then as well because the you know, days. yeah it, it, there was those days so it was such a part of my identity so it's like you know it's kind of like am i selfish or am i not yeah and yeah. You, it, it was a clear choice for me but it's like when people go vegan and they want to give up cheese but they can't so yeah. it's kind of similar you it's know it's like it's step, I, would, so. but I just love cheese i hate cheese so it was easy for me but yeah, yeah me too um but you know that's that's what it was and then you know 
I, I, I can't say like I haven't shopped in, in, in one year, you know, I've had like, you know, during, during uh, the first lockdown, uh, I shopped a little bit so I could support my friends' businesses yeah, that, you know, yeah. they were being, being But it's, it's more conscious decisions, It's more right? conscious and when you buy something it's because you really need it or because you really love it and it's yeah. not just like because people are wearing this and that. And yeah, it's more yeah. like, you know, I also had so many clothes that I had, that I had bought before um, that it was just like I bought them for no reason and yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm selling them now so I can, you know, spend that money on something else and like, but I don't want to chuck them away, you know, I want to keep like the loop going and mm. stuff and, you know, it's, it, it was a difficult step but it also makes you be more, I don't know, like more creative with like, even the, the clothes you wear, you know, because you always can, when you, I think when I used to plan my outfits, I kind of bought stuff. I'm gonna buy this shirt because it will look really good with these yeah, trousers, yeah, you know. Yeah. I always make that More connection. Great, yeah. But then after you just with what you have, you have to make do. That's true. And also I think it makes you the fact that then you're willing to say, oh, you know what, I can sacrifice this, it then opens your eyes to be like, I can do this with loads of other stuff. In general, I think it it, it takes down your guard with mm -hmm. a lot of other decisions in your life. Yeah. It sort of adds up. Yeah. So then like eventually I was like, oh well, if it comes to like, okay, I can give up all the, all of these foods and just do veggie and whatever. Okay, when it comes to my fashion. Okay, I just don't wear leather belts then. I won't yeah. wear leather shoes. And then it's like, if I don't do that, then I can do this. And it's like, but, okay. but then, for example, just a random question. Yeah, yeah, do yeah. you wear leather if you had it before? Oh no, just because you went vegan, you don't wear it. Because I, I wear yeah, leather. One, one, one. I wear leather that I had before. Because for me, like those, the two yeah, issues. Just chucking them away doesn't but, solve anything. Yeah, yeah, doesn't solve it. Uh, so, so I, the only thing I have which is leather that I, I, I wear. So I don't buy leather. I don't buy anything that isn't like vegan, mm, basically. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. But. Uh, it's like real smart shoes for weddings. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everything else is like trainers, doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just those I've had for like two, three years. Because the belt that I wear all the time is a belt from an Arsenal suit from five years ago. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> That's nostalgic as well. I got it with that little Arsenal badge in here. <laughs> but it's like, this it fits me perfect. It yeah. works well. It looks like brand new and I had it for five years. And I was like, yeah, okay, it's leather. I bought it like five years ago. Of what do I do? Yeah. Do I buy a new one for no reason when yeah, I have it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I always ask people that, that question okay. to see what they do. Nice. No, you're trying to just catch me out on my own show, no, I just, bro. No, because it's I interesting because there's people that, that when they go vegan straight away, they're like, no, I'm not wearing leather. Of course, of course. Ever again, you know? For me, I... that defeats the purpose kind exactly. of, of why I, you do it. I, I would say, don't be so hard on yourself. Is We're all along this journey, like, no matter what, even if you're like, yeah. not vegan, whatever, just do whatever makes you happy, man. As long as you're not hurting anyone 100%. else. 100%. Like, that's it. Like, whatever helps you sleep at night, we're all dying at the end of the day. Yeah, you know and, I mean? and if you think you're vegan and you have a leather belt and someone tells you you're not, you're not vegan, bro, if you're vegan, if you yeah, feel vegan, bro. you're vegan. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's all, we, I always say it's like, it's never black or white, man. It's always course, like a yeah. shade of gray. So we are trying to make the best effort that we can yeah, do. And true. me, what I always say is like, always try. Yeah, Just yeah, try. Yeah, of course. You know, there's so many documentaries come out now and so all these things. perspectives. Yeah. This is propaganda, vegan propaganda here. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. this is meat propaganda here. Yeah. It's like, bro, what if it's all propaganda? What am I going to do? I'm yeah. just going to breathe air. Yeah, yeah I mean, and I have like, friends that they're like, I don't think I'll be able to do it. And I was like, look, you have the information now. You do whatever you want with it. But exactly. I always say, like, just try. Yeah, you know, yeah, trying yeah. is the only thing you can do. And exactly. if you can't, then you can't. But at least you try. Always try new things because yeah. you'll just find out so much about yourself. Yeah. That's the try one this tea. I've... Exactly. Well, it is, it is yeah. it, though, to be fair. Um, okay, so with all the stuff you've done, right, do you have any plans or anything that you're looking for? to do in the future or mm. is it still do you even plan any of that stuff or you're just kind of day by day whatever happens happens a lot of the stuff that I, i've done in the past i have not planned mm -hmm. a lot of them i had like you know visions of like it would be so cool if i could be but i'm 510 i never thought i would be walking for lv bro <laughs> so i'm too short for that and that <laughs> happened you know so a generous 510 yeah generous 510 yeah, yeah. <laughs> five free no <laughs> so yeah, I, I never thought I would do that, yeah. but you know, I had the opportunity to do it and yeah. they called me, I was like, yeah, of course I want to do it. So loads of things have happened like that. The Guillermo and the stuff with 424 happened also very organically, never really planned it. And then it just happened. And um, now there's something I'm working on. That can, I, can, I, can I reveal? Mm, I can't. No, bro. the exclusive I'm on so Team with Tim. Sorry, Timsy. bro. I'm so, honestly, if I could, I will. Really? And you'll be one of the first people, you know. But I've been working on something for like three, four months now. It's gonna still take me like a good year. Okay, nice. But can you I mean, me it's, after, it's a, it's a yeah, well, and it's a bit more planned now. But that doesn't mean that other things are not gonna come up. Okay, okay. Because nice. other things have been coming up, and so is it, is it yeah. your creative studio and Hackney? That one? Is it to do? No, with that's it? that's up. We oh, have right, uh, that creative right. studio already. Oh, yeah, that's my document. My documentary was like the first thing that we created mm. with uh, nice. Hyphen Studio. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, that reminds me, talking of that as well. Firstly, it was amazing. Sick. Thank you, Ron. Great, great, like, insight, obviously for, like, any Arsenal fans as well. It's, like, just 
seeing behind the scenes stuff is always so sick, it's so mm. good. Um, how was that to film? Because obviously the injury wasn't planned, came out of nowhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then, yeah. did you then decide, right, after you got the, over the initial shock, oh, I want to film this, or at what stage did you think, I actually want to make something I mean, I, I, I vlogged my, my first night, so I got home, it was like 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, in your bed, and I was like, you're tired, I just like vlogging. So I was like, honestly, I didn't know what, what I was going to do with it. Yeah. And um, I just said to, to my friend, I was like, look, Tomorrow I'm going for a scan. Tell, uh, call a camera guy just to follow me and uh, I can speak to him or whatever and uh, let's see where it goes. So from that and the vlogs that I was having okay. and then when I was in Barcelona, um, a friend came in with a camera um, to, to the theater while I was operating and everything. And it was all like very, we, we never thought like, let's do a documentary, let's do a movie, let's do this, let's do we were like, let's film. Just shoot yeah. for shooting sake. That's shoot. it. Yeah. We had, I don't know if you had like 20 hours maybe? Or yeah, it's like a lot. More stuff? Or yeah, I, th lot. I think probably even more like mm. 50 or something. But many hours. And um, we were going to do a, like a little documentary, like a movie or something. And then my friend was like, oh, yeah, we have so much stuff. We have to do like a little series or something because otherwise we're not going to be able to get it. Yeah. And these guys have been work, had work for like a year, a year and a half behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, you know, my man Charlie, uh, which was like the, the director of the, of the documentary is like sleepless nights, just like editing. He's watches us so many times, transcribed like yeah. everything. And you know, they, they, they work so hard and I'm so grateful that they did it. But I think, for me, it was also very therapeutic, you know, because obviously it's a process that I had my family around me and stuff, but I had never really spoke to everyone about like everything that was going through my head, you yeah. know, and uh, how vulnerable I was and like the, the ups and downs of it. And for me, sitting down towards the camera, knowing that, you know, everyone will be able to see it was like a big weight off my shoulders. It, is quite, it must be quite liberating, right? It's yeah, like it's, it's, well, letting the world know about your problems. Yeah, and also it's therapy. After I came back on the pitch, we still were doing the documentary and there was so much stuff like surrounding the injury about my life, yeah. you know? And uh, when we dropped it, it was like, finally, you know, that, that's, that's my injury done, yeah. you know? And um, it was really good in, in many ways. And, nice. you know, I, I, it's ha it has helped a lot of people. For, I, I, I get lots of messages all the time. Amazing. You know, I get um, physios that they say that they play it for the people that are rehabbing and stuff like Sick. that. Because for me, it's like the, the biggest thing, you know? I, I, it was the first time that I got injured like that and I had friends and teammates that had gone through it before. I had my family next to me, but I n didn't know exactly what was going to happen to me. Mm. And I didn't know if those doubts in my head were normal and like, you know, so I feel like I would have loved to watch that before I got injured. And yeah. I feel like now is an opportunity for people to do that. And, you know, if that helps them in any way and shows them that, you know, when you do it, it feels like the end of the world, but yeah. nine months down the line, you're fine. Lit, bro. Sick. Oh, it makes, it makes me so happy, man. Um, because it was, it was open and you were honest with, you know, the, the, the highs and the lows of rehab. Mm -hmm. It was like, it's fucking brutal, man. Like, yeah, were there lower lows that you didn't show because it was like real tough or did, were you quite... No, I think I, I was trying to be as, as honest as I could and yeah. everything that really went through my mind and, you know, I talk about an experience that, you know, I really, I really started when I came back and I wasn't really training and yeah. I could walk and stuff like I started going out a lot, you know, and I started like drinking a lot and yeah, all this yeah. stuff and, you know, for a footballer, that, that's not what you're supposed to say, but it's the truth, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and, um, you know, we, we have our issues, we have our, you know, mental health problems and, you know, when you, football, which is basically your identity, gets like, taken out of you like what you said you know during quarantine you couldn't work anymore yeah yeah, yeah. um oh, we find it we find it difficult and obviously london is a city that you know has to offer there all the time and it's a lot of distractions and it's really easy and when you don't feel you have a responsibility because obviously i knew i had to recover but i was like i don't have to train i don't have to play and um you know my, my mind kind of just went elsewhere and i was lucky enough to have like players and coaches that you know they knew what i was doing and they were like hey, so that's not the right way to yeah, do you yeah. know and I feel so lucky about that. But also, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of it. Or I feel like, you know, it's what happened to me. Yeah. And uh, it's not that I didn't Why know any better. It's just, it, yeah. it's just like the way I was feeling. And for me, 
that was the best way of coping with my feelings, which is obviously not the best anyway. Yeah. You don't help anything. It's kind of like almost you just delay it. Yeah, yeah. But um, that's how I felt like doing then, and I thought I could get away with it. And uh, you know, I learned so much from it. And now, you know, when I have an injury, the last thing I do is drink. Yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah, I know yeah, like how course. bad that is. Yeah. But sometimes you just don't care, or like yeah. it's it's difficult. But the fact that you were so open with it as well, I feel like now because you've you've paved that lane for yourself. I, if I'm, there's I'm an really, issue, right? Yeah. For example, even like. Israel Palestine mm -hmm. recently, which is what I've been like, I don't, I don't know what to say and stuff. Yeah. Um, or if it's if it's equality and you're very vocal about you know mm -hmm. women's rights and yeah. Black Lives Matter and stuff like, do you get not scared? Isn't the right word? Are you hesitant before doing it? I think I'm hesitant about saying the right thing about about getting my point across in the way that I want to say it because I think. That's the difficult thing today that everyone is analysing what you're saying and people will put words in your mouth. Misinterpret. Yeah, misinterpret well. everything, you know? And with bigger issues, you have to be extra careful. And uh, I think it's just a society that we live today as well that you're always going to find people on both sides. I think uh, we also really try to be very politically correct, which I think in me you don't want to offend anyone, which that's the last thing that we want to do. But also I feel like being really politically correct is actually taking individuality out of people because everyone is just basically saying the same thing mm. because it's the only thing that you're really allowed to say. Yeah. So everyone just sounds like the same. Put into a and box. I do have a problem with that, you know? Yeah. And I feel like when I try to give my opinions, I try to give my opinions that I fully want to, that I fully feel, mm. not something that is like censored, you know? And for me, trying to give uh, an opinion that is not censored that makes sense, that people can understand, that doesn't offend anyone, etc. With a it's pure sometimes intention, it's, right? Yeah, so, sometimes it's hard to find a way yeah, to do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I think it's important to try, and as I said, it's always about starting a conversation. And yeah. When you're going to have opinions, some people are going to like it, some people are going to not, some people might want to cancel you, some people not, but at the end of the day, we're all different and we're not going to share the same opinions. And to yeah. me, like, even like cancelling someone, it defeats the purpose, you know, because yeah. I said things in like, you know, when you go to people's old tweets yeah, and stuff bro. like that, it's like, you know, we, we grow as people and yeah. what you want to do with like the tools that we have today is actually, you know, show people that there can be improvement. Yeah. You know, you, you, you should, you should yeah. celebrate that, the improvement, not just like, oh, this person said this or yeah. no, nah, let's not talk to them again. No, that's completely like, yeah. that's how these more people like that will will come up, you know, yeah. by like yeah. cancelling people and then put them aside and then, yeah, yeah. you know, not, not, not helping them in any in any way, so for me, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big issue that we have as a society in, yeah. in, in how, we, how we react to how people feel or what they say, and it's difficult to navigate that yeah. as, a, as a footballer, as an athlete. Or yeah, yeah, like people very very quick to like judge as well and like pass judgment on others, basically. Of course. It's like being patient and just taking a step back to breathe mm -hmm. first and then... And also, I don't mean? feel like you need to talk about everything you know and obviously there's issues that are bigger than others but also you as a human being you will have things that you care more about i care a lot about the environment but i have very close friends that they don't give a yeah, shit no, about yeah, it you of know course. and for them it's like oh but me i don't know not having plastic is not really going to change the world and listen i understand the point yeah. of view but i don't share it yeah. But, it, but it's the same. And I don't feel like you need, you need to fight about everything and you always need to be talking about those issues because then if you always do that, you also lose this meaning. Because yeah, then who you, what are you really fighting for? What are you passionate about? I don't know, because you talk about one thing one day, about the other, the other, the yeah, other, the yeah, other. Yeah. You know, and I feel like I just try to speak about things that I know about, that I strongly feel about, yeah. that I strongly feel I can influence people with and that I think they have value. Yeah, yeah. Just because like there's a conflict going on. I, sometimes I just there's nothing for me to say that's going to help or that's going to influence and yeah. you know so that's why sometimes it's like as you say probably better to hold back yeah. and then you know find that the, once you have the right way to say or you feel strongly about saying something then yeah. go ahead you are so well spoken it's a joke <laughs> I was that whole monologue there I was like this isn't even his first language, mate. This takes the piss. Yeah, man, I'm not even English now. As to, bro, I speak better English as Spanish now, probably, bro. No, you don't. Shut up. <laughs> no, but as, right, as someone who, who, who speaks languages as well, like loves languages, yeah. that level of bilingual, mm. for me, is I'm so jealous. Genuinely, I'd love to know from a truly like bilingual person now, right? Uh, do you think in English or Spanish? I don't think, bro. That's the thing. People ask me this question, I don't think. No, what do you mean you don't think? I just think? talk. Okay, no, 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 no. I'm okay. a question and I'm, I'm replying straight away. So when no, I'm talking to you, I'm talking no, no, in no. English, I'm replying in English. I know you English. don't think, but as in, in your head, or you know when you're at home, right, you're 
washing the dishes or whatever, and you're just thinking, just do you speak to yourself in your head, right? I speak to myself. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is I, that, I try is that, not is to, that, is that, is I try is, not to. No, I'm <laughs> so open with it, bro. I, I speak in my head the whole time. I'm meant Good. to. But is that person speaking, is little Hector in your head? Yeah, speaking I, in French, mo mostly in Spanish. Or, mostly is in Spanish. Spanish. You, know, you know when I realise it's like when I'm in the gym and I'm doing reps, yeah. I count in Spanish. Okay. But then I do this thing that I have two diaries, right? I journal in one, mm -hmm. which like I journal about my feelings, my that, and I write in Spanish. But then my day to day, yeah. which I don't like doing it on the phone, okay. I like having a little uh, notepad and okay. saying what I'm doing in the day. I write that in English. Wow. So I don't know why. It's like I feel like work mode feels like more English because almost all the work that I do is in English. Of course, your professional life yeah, is very like English. Meeting, meeting with someone, da, 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 you know, yeah. English. But then when I journal, I, I think because I don't know my feelings and everything like growing up and stuff is in Spanish, so I write in Spanish. That's yeah. amazing. That's yeah, fascinating. It's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. So you keep a journal. I uh, keep a job. How, how, bro, I, everyone, had, so Vuj does the same, my mate John, yeah. my mate John does video diaries. Really? And you just start recording, you go yeah. on photo booth on, on yeah, yeah, Mac yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just speak. Yeah. Just speak your mind, whatever. It's, it's, for me, it's liberating in a way because I have to say that I haven't been as consistent as I was. During quarantine, I was so consistent. No judgment here. I was yeah. every day, two pages at least. Uh, wow. And I have like really small like uh, lettering, you know, so like I used to write a lot. And the good thing is like, it doesn't matter where you take it from, when you're like halfway through it and you're getting the flow, then that's when everything starts flowing, and yeah, you, you know? And for me it was waking up in the morning with like probably thoughts from the day before, or you just woke up feeling a bit grumpy, da, da, da. You just basically like vomit everything. All your thoughts are out. That's and then when you finish, you're just like in a different place. I need to start doing you that. Know? So I've needed to do I, that. I'm wow. not doing that every day now. Uh, but now when I do a journal for longer. Wow. Yeah, okay. and that's something that I've really enjoyed and yeah, I mean, I, I highly recommend it. Is that, that deep, like personal stuff as well? Like, it's like the it's, a, it's a bit of everything. Uh, sometimes I talk about my issues, some talk, sometimes I talk about my day, sometimes I talk about ideas that I have or okay, future nice. projects, or whatever comes to my head, Sick. really. You know? Nice. Yeah. Before we actually go into like actual football, because I feel like I just don't want to speak to, to you about football because there's <laughs> no need in it, but I will because I know people also want to know that. Yeah. Like, Right, considering where you are right now, current time mm -hmm. in your life, what you've gone through, would you say you are the happiest you've been? I think that I have more tools to be happier for longer and to be sad or angry for less time. Okay. I, I don't think we ever reach a level in which like we're happy because... Yeah, it's a bad question, sorry. No, no, but it's true, but it's not a bad question because that's the same question that people ask. And people ask themselves, and like for me, for me, I don't think you reach like a level where just like, oh yeah, I'm happy. Of no, course, you, of course. there's always problems in life, and you know, I guess it's like learning to have the tools to, whenever you have that problem again or a similar mm. problem, you can solve it in a better way than you did before, yeah. and not let it affect you in the same way, etc. Uh -huh. So I feel like I have better tools, okay, to dealing with problems that life throws at me or internal problems and. You know, I'm more willing to explore what's happening inside of me and yeah. around me. And uh, I would say I'm happier in that way. Yeah. yeah. Okay, nice. You answered that very well. The, okay, so maybe, you, obviously, you're more experienced. Life experience, obviously. Going through, yeah, you've gone through sure. more and, and you, I guess you're more balanced and everything. But, okay, maybe a different question is, are you most comfortable, like, in your own skin now? Do you feel most at ease with, like, who you are now? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. You're, you're not, not happy with who you are, but you are you are comfortable with who you are right for, now. For me, shaving my head, for example, which like for some, a lot of people did it in quarantine, right? And yeah. I guess everyone did it for their own reasons. But yeah. for me to shave my head when my hair had been like one of my it's most thing. precious yeah. assets ever. Um, and I did it myself and, you know, I had been thinking about it for a while and, you know, I just went like, boom, and I did it. And for me, that was like a huge, like, kind of like, put aside my ego in a way, you know, which is like something, um, you know, external, but internally, it really did something yeah, to yeah. me. And I feel like I am in a, in a much better place and much more comfortable in my own skin. And, you know, I feel like also when, you know, I was coming out of my shell and I used to get like loads of uh, abuse or scrutiny or like whatever, I really took it to heart. And it's very difficult to like be comfortable with yourself when like everyone thinks of you like really negative. Yeah. Or not that everyone thinks that way, but what you're seeing is a lot of people that do think that way. Mm. Whereas then 
once people began to understand me and that I wasn't doing that for the likes, I was doing that because that was my passion and yeah, that's just yeah, the person yeah. I am. People started understanding me and people started to back me more and just like accept me as who I am, then also that allowed me to like accept myself more and like, okay. look, I'm just different than, yeah, yeah, yeah. than the guy that sits down next to me in the dressing room, you yeah. know? Like there's not an issue with that. Maybe I don't feel similar to footballers in, in a way, but I do connect with many people that are outside of football, mm. like with you, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's so at the beginning, it took me a long time to realize that and I felt less than them, let's say. And now I just feel the same as them, which yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. that's the best way to feel. Not, not, not better secure. or worse, just yeah. the same, you know. My value now, the value of myself, my self-esteem is not valued by, you know, my performances or like Other how people, yeah, yeah. I feel they, they see me or whatever. It's just like it's normal, it's good. It's always, I try to stay always in the same wave. So that's great, man. Having that knowledge and like having arrived to that or well, answered that question for myself what's really helpful. Nice. And uh, you as the footballer, right? What is a, day, a, a normal day in the life of Hector Bellerin? Quarantine for me has been amazing in doing that, my routine, because I okay. never had a routine. Because I always see myself as someone so spontaneous and I love spontaneity. Is yeah. That yeah, yeah, that's it? the right word. <laughs> yeah, I'm, bilingual. English I'm, bi I'm bilingual, <laughs> but I was like, I, I don't want to just like make a word up here now. Um, <laughs> So I've always seen myself someone very Idiot. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> um, so, and I feel like Spanish culture, for example, is very like that. And the way yeah, you, you meet with people. Siestas. You know, siesta, yeah, what are you yeah, doing, Siestas, man? you know, and like you go for a coffee and you end up like at 10 a.m. with like seven friends that you hadn't seen in 10 years. And they just, you know, everything is so like, yeah. uh, not really thought. Well, as I feel like in London, I need to think two hours ahead to come to East London because I know how the traffic's gonna be, all of this, you yeah, know, it's, yeah. it takes that out of you. So anyway, the point is I see myself as that kind of person that I don't like nothing to define me. I can do anything, I can eat at any time. I don't need to sleep at this time and whatever. And I decided to set up a routine and I was doing the same thing every day at the same time. Yeah. Like my meals, going to sleep, waking up. Nice. Um, and that fully changed how I felt, okay. uh, you know, like, I, I mean, I don't know if you know, people know this, but like, if you always eat at the same time, you know, your stomach kind of like starts like getting ready for digestion just yeah, before yeah, that yeah, because yeah. you're not. So it's like yeah. when you, when people have a baby, they have a routine, right? They always bath him at the same time and they feed him at the same time so then he can fall asleep. We're still like babies, we're the yeah, same, yeah, but it's yeah. just like we don't, you know, because of the way we live, we're not like that. The creatures are habit, man. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So for me, making that step was really important. So now my day to day would be waking up around 7.50. Ooh, okay. 7.50. Yeah. Okay, 7 very 50. exact. Yeah. Because, so I do yoga at 8 a.m. Oh, most mornings. Wow. Yeah. Hippie. <laughs> Which is one of the best things that happened to me in really? the quarantine. Yeah, I'm, nice. I'm like so into it. It's every helped day. me every day five, six days a week. Because wow. it always depends on like game day and game day I don't do it. Of course. Or if I do, because yoga think, people think it's like positions and blah, blah, blah. but, but yoga is like tough bro. breathing, it's like meditation, it's so many things. Uh, Repetitions of yeah. poses and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but probably like game day I would just do pranayama, which is like breathing and meditation and that's it. But that's also yoga. Nice. So I do that every morning, then I'll go to training, Breakfast. Uh, Breakfast. Night. No, I. You train fasted. Yeah, I fast. Yeah. Six. Time eight. You do time restricted eating. Sixteen eight. Yeah. Nine to sixteen eight. So nice. I I train Why fasted. Tra yeah. I train fasted, which I re I feel really like. You know, if I when for example when we play, if we play early morning, then I'll eat. You know, because it's a game. It's a different Burn kind of well, yeah. So then in training, I'll go in, have a coffee with everyone and stuff. Do some, you know. Uh, what's it called, like activation or recovery, depending on the day. Go out to train, go home, have some food, and then after food, siesta time. Oh, you actually still siesta? Uh, siesta you can take the boy out I don't, do, I don't do it every day, but yeah. I try to have that time to Naps siesta. That's lit though. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if not, I always try to use that time for, you know, reading or watching something or like- slow down. Yeah. And then I do this weird thing that usually people have like eight hours, eight hour work days, right? 
And at training, we never spent eight hours at training. No. So then if I've been at training for five hours, I will work for three hours. Oh, okay. In the afternoon. Okay. You know, I have yeah, like... Yeah. So for me, working would be, I don't know, doing... In, this is working for me. Okay. Or like uh, doing loads of Zoom meetings nowadays. Okay, nice. Or if I'm working on a project, do... I'm like... Creative my, and... Yeah, but oh, a lot of my stuff is very research-based, you know. So okay. I like doing research of like certain things and okay. like all, all this stuff. That's why I do in the afternoon, evening. And then I have some food and then just chill. Nice. And that's, that's my And then when do you regular... go to bed? 11 p.m.? My bedtime routine starts at 11 and okay. I'll fall asleep by like 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, okay, nice. So and just before 12, so eight hours usually. Decent. Yeah, eight, nice. nine hours. Yeah. Sick, that's a good routine. Yeah. I, I, you know what I recommend? MCT oil. What's that? MCT oil. So oh, you know it's, it's, like deri- it's like coconut derived oil. So okay. I put it in my coffee now because um, Usually, if I have like a coffee or like two coffees, you know when you get the shakes, yeah, 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 like yeah. super buzzy off yeah. it. So it like helps. It slows down your digestion of uh, caffeine. Okay. So it, it instead of it being like a big foot and then a crash and yeah. you just slump, it's real smooth and yeah. it just sustains your energy. Because the thing like, is, I don't really have caffeine like that, man. What do you mean? I don't really have. You don't ca- have coffee anymore. I have decaf usually. Really? Did I speak to you about the caffeine thing when we when we had food that day? No. Nah. Because I swear we, you had a decaf coffee yeah, that day. Yeah, I had day. a decaf coffee. No, yeah. but you didn't explain why. Yeah, I, I read this book called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, I think. Matt Walker, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, okay, fair. And it's really yeah, good. And okay. the, the caffeine thing is like, so look, if I really need it, I'll have it. There's days that I will have it, but... Because coffee's great. Yeah, I love <laughs> coffee. And, and for me, coffee is not just like the buzz, it's like the comfort, you know? Like yeah, you smell yeah. coffee in the morning, you're like, yeah, it's just glory. Yeah. I'm awake. <laughs> yeah, for real. But, you know... The fact that I'm a footballer and I know that I have to be physically and mentally always 100%. If I feel like caffeine is not really doing it for me, mm. then I have, I have decaf most okay, of the time. Okay, okay, nice. So if I'm really tired, you know, sometimes after games, you don't sleep well, blah, 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 then I'll probably have a little bit yeah. of that's, caffeine. So, so when it um, comes to match day routine, mm. I, I always wonder this as well, because obviously I, I, mean, I play on Saturdays and I'm like, okay, eat two hours before the game, two and a half hours before the game have a shake or some food or whatever. And then by the time I'm playing, I'm like, okay, have a gel. And I, I, Cause I don't know, I'm yeah. not, obviously I'm not a professional yeah, yeah. athlete. Whereas yeah. I've always been interested in an actual professional footballer's routine mm. of say you've got a 3 p.m. Yeah. It's like, you have, do you have breakfast and lunch? Like when do you stop eating? So, look, th- this year we've, we've played mostly in the evening. Okay. Mostly like seven o'clock, eight o'clock. So I would say, I wake up at eight o'clock, have a coffee, and what I try not to do is like, I try not to do errands or things on our game day, because usually we'll meet up at the stadium around one o'clock, two o'clock, depends. You don't right? want to do rush yourself. So I, I, don't, I don't want to do stuff. I want to take it easy, chill, have my coffee, because you don't realize, but that's like exercise, actually, like walking to places and yeah. driving to places, that's exercise. So I, do, I try not to do that. So then at like two o'clock or something, I'll have my first meal, which, because I fast, the first thing I eat is like, uh, fats, healthy fats, yeah, so yeah, like yeah, avocados yeah. and yogurt, yogurt and things like that. Yeah. So you said yogurt? Yogurt, yeah, I have I yogurts, love I love yogurts, man. Uh, <laughs> I have yogurts, I have like, you know, things like that. Uh, and then I have, um, also if I'm really hungry, I have a little bit of like protein, like chickpeas and rice and veggies and stuff like that. Then I will nap, then nice. it's nap time. And on game day, my nap times are, probably two hours. Okay. Usually at like one hour, okay. but on game days, two hours. Then- Before the game? Yeah, usually until like 4.30 or something like that. Cause okay. we really don't play till like eight. eight. Yeah, so, and then we'll have another, a meal like three and a half hours before the game, okay. usually. Yeah. So like 4.30, so yeah, 4.30 is our meal. So if we play at eight, so then at that time, probably be pasta. Okay, nice. Yeah, cause I don't really have that much pasta throughout yeah. the week. Yeah. So. It's like kind of I'm letting my body know that it's like, yeah, yeah time, we need the air energy. Yeah. Get this, yeah, and obviously drink a lot of water, man. Yeah, drink a lot of water. Yeah. Like I, I'm not the best person at drinking water, but when it comes to game day, that's like yeah, from the first thing in the morning. It. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fair. And then do, do you smash caffeine? Meditation. Like, like what do you mean? Important before the game. Oh, you meditation. meditation. Yeah, meditation or like no. breathing. breathing. For me, breathing. for me, Wim breathing Hoff. is like the. Not. I mean, I've never done Wim Hof. It's but lit, I, I read a book by, uh, what's it called? James Nestor, I think it's called. It's called 
breathe, okay. which is like he basically does these studies and researches about breathing and stuff like that, about um, techniques, what different te breathing techniques do to you, but yeah. just like having like a calm, steady breathe through your nose and stuff like that and just count the times and it puts me in such a place. It slows you down so much. Yeah, for me it like yeah. senses me and when we when I do yoga in the mornings we we actually spend like 20 minutes of breathing exercises. Okay, nice. And when I, if for some reason one morning we don't do it and we go straight into positions or something, it's so different. So yeah. it focuses me so much. Yeah, so it you. I, I really do that. Like in the dressing room, everyone's like listening to music. And in my AirPods, I actually, I actually have a metronome. <laughs> You've got white noise. Just... I've got a metronome, going, but, but and I'm counting the seconds and You're I'm breathing. <laughs> and I'm like, and it puts me in a great position, man, wow. to just like go out there. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. That's so different. So sometimes when people walk past, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's just good. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was straight back in. Straight yeah, back man. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a weirdo, innit? Yeah, no, bro. Hey, weird gang. Come on, weirdo. Come on, bro. It's all about weird. You know yeah. why? Because we're all weird. Yeah. We're all weird. We all are, man. We every, all have our things, innit? Every, but which means we're all normal because we're all weird. It's yeah. normal to be weird. It's just like we're fine telling yeah, everyone man. about it. Some people it's so liberating. It, yeah, bro, I'm sure. so weird. For sure. You, should, you guys should try it, man. I know, really? I actually, I should, um, I was going to say, uh, Rhonda Patrick, do you know who she is? Yeah, I have my podcast, her. Her podcast, yeah. She's amazing. Mm. Oh, wait, were we talking about this recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we said, bro, she's so sick. I, I haven't so had many of her, but I know that she's really good. And sauna, I I'd say, so she bangs on about the sauna. She said how yeah, good yeah. it is, like heat shock therapy and everything. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. Like, Amazing. Oh, I need to get on that, man. Yeah, because she's the one who got me on uh, time restricted eating and fasting as well, because she mm -hmm. said that like, repairing damaged DNA and, and yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, apoptosis, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but then she's now like 20, 30 minutes in a sauna, like real high, like. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wow. But then also I'm into cold therapy as well, because Wim Hof, mm -hmm. so I've been taking cold showers every day now for about six months. Really? How do you feel about that? Bro, it's, it's sick. Really? It's better. Because I've tried that before, when I was really young. I was still living in Spain, I think, but... But you know yeah. what it is? It's always, even like with veganism, doing something is always easier when you've read it and you know the information of why you are doing it, yeah, rather than yeah, just yeah. doing it. If I tell yeah, you to yeah. do it, you might do it once or twice, but yeah. you're like, this is shit. Whereas if you know why you're doing it, so then, bro, it's better than any coffee you'll have. Like, really? in the morning, I'll do it. First I can thing see I do, that, wake though, I can up, see that. And you're, obviously, you're, you, you, you go for it, and you sort of meditate, but it's all, you focus on your breathing, embrace the cold, yeah. and your body just fires up. And really? then when you come out and you start drying off, you're like, I just want to punch a wall or something. I'm like, <laughs> yes, I'm ready. All the tension, isn't it? Bro, yeah. it's, it's amazing. You should probably do that, man. It's so good. I, I, bro, I've got Wim Hof's book if you want. I will send it to you. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, you sure. can buy your own. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> what am I, I doing love, sending you a book? All my books I buy a second hand, bro. I love used books, so. Okay, do you want to buy it off me? Yeah, 100%. Two How grand. Much? Calm. <laughs> I need to pay for no, this no, show no. somehow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think I think that's all we've got time for. I'm so not, bro. I will, I will talk about football. Yeah. I, we literally didn't even. It's talk It's always about, short, innit? It's always short, man. Bro, I was Every time we link up. I was just talking about like training. Jude Bellingham, we were talking about because he's lit. Like, mm -hmm. but hey, another time. Episode another time, two. man. Episode two, season part, two, you know? Part two. Part two, season, season two. two. Season two. Yeah, true. Season two, when we've got a sponsor in, Alpro have sponsored the game. Yeah, coffee, Yogi you know I mean? Tea. Yes, yo yeah. actually, I should probably... Give love, get love. It's not just about being a taker, you have to give as well, yeah? Okay, oh, this one, my one. Compassion will make you beautiful. Whoa. That is amazing. Oh, and with that... That's a good one. With that, we'll call it a day. That is amazing. <laughs> um, okay, but yeah, never know. I'll, 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 look, eventually, you know, we'll, we'll get you back on. Sure, you know, man. I need to get a few more people on, get the ball rolling. Just closer to home next time. Please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, okay, next time we'll, oh, we'll film it in your garden in the summer, isn't it? Let's do that, man. Let's do, summer, that. Let's do that. Okay, yeah. I'm holding you to it. But yeah, that is it. I hope you enjoyed, guys. Um, leave a like, subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you next week for a new episode. Heck, thank you so much. Bro. I didn't even say thank you, bro. Thank you so much. Spud, bro. Spud, Spud, Spud. Spud, Spud, Spud. Okay, we're love, safe bro. here, yeah? No, 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 Social course, distance, you know? But, bro, honestly, I appreciate <laughs> it so much because you, you, you don't need to do this. Like, this is just you being kind. No, it's my pleasure, stuff, bro. So it's my pleasure. I do honestly appreciate it so much, you know? You're a good guy, so thank you so much. And, yeah, everyone, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you soon. Oh, yeah. Good? My, my guy.